No, 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 no. So I ended up buying this wood from Amazon and I have never done this before, but I wanted to try it out. Came in a nice package here. I got to pick out exactly what I wanted. I went for the package that had the walnut, the cherry, and the maple in it. Pretty much your classic cutting board pieces. And the beauty of this is that it's S4S. And I had no idea how I was going to set this up for a board because the first thing I wanted to do was make sure I had all the pieces that I could use. Once I figured out that I had all the good pieces that I needed, it was time to figure out what the board was going to look like. Make sure it can fit through my planer, make sure I, I don't have to join anything, and then figure out the pattern. And I, come, I came up with a, quite a few patterns here until I decided to take it to the boss and see what she had to say. And the boss said, why don't you try a ombre board? I had never heard of an ombre board. I don't know if you have, but this is what an ombre board is. It starts from dark color and goes to light, and I think it's kind of cool. So that's what we're doing here. And that brings me to tip number one. Tip number one is deciding what type of wood that you're using for your project. And that's not just the type of species, but it's also the type of process that's already on your wood. So S2S, S3S, S4S. And what that really means is surfaced on how many sides? When you get rough cut lumber, the first thing you have to do is mill it down. You have to surface it yourself, be it the planer, be it the jointer. But I bought this wood and it was S4S. And that in and of itself is probably the best part about buying this wood from Amazon. Now it showed up S4S and I was able to get right into the process of building a cut in board. Yeah, it was probably on my shelf for a few weeks, months, maybe even a year, but it doesn't defeat the purpose that I didn't have to mill it down. And this is a perfect minimal tool project for your beginning woodworker or even somebody who's looking to make holiday projects and just wants an easy project to batch out for a couple of friends and family members. Right here, I put on my patented chamfer. I put a heavy chamfer on it. I just feel like it's a functional thing to put on the board because you can pick it up and hold it. Not that I don't like regular handholds, but I think the chamfer just adds another visual element to it, especially for these chunkier boards. Now, use a lot of air to blow out the dust in between grits just so that I'm not smashing around those other dust particles from those other grits. And then I use the same process on this board that I use on all of them. I reach for my CA glue and accelerator and I just fill all of these little holes. Mostly they're bug holes and I hit them with the CA glue and the accelerator and then I'm able to hit it with my sander and fairly quickly amount of time. I water pop through every grit starting with about 150, 120 depending on what sandpaper I'm using but I'll go 120, 150, water pop then I'll go straight to 180, 220, 300 and 400 and the sole purpose behind this is just to make sure that the first time it hits warm water and soapy water that we don't have all those fuzzies that come up. So that process is pretty important to a successful cutting board. On the top of my boards, I like to put a little slight chamfer on it using my little block plane. And this is successful probably 99% of the time, pretty much until it's not. So, didn't film it, but I'll tell you what I did. So I was nervous that I was gonna have the same problem again with the tear out. I like to use my block plane because it gives it a nice little soft chamfer there. It's not huge. I could take out my router, but we're learning. So I wanted to use this and make sure that I can get it right. My block plane is nice and sharp, as you can see by this nice little curly piece of maple, but the problem I was having is my grain is running down here straight until it gets to the end where it starts to turn. So as I was trying to hit the block plane, I was rushing and it snagged a piece of the grain and just pulled it right off. So taking our time, I was able to do it. So I to get nice curly cues and use my nice little block plane to soften those edges. So that's done. Now 
I'm gonna hit it with some 400 grit sandpaper, just hand sanding it now. I've water popped through all of the grits and we are ready to oil after we do that. I'm probably gonna throw my brand on the back here and I'm waiting to know if I need to throw a logo on the front here, but I can also do that after the oil and just hit it with some wax again. So let's get into it. With that crisis averted, let's get into the next thing. Just finishing up with some hand sanding. And the next thing I want to do is I want to throw my namesake on it. If I'm selling this board or giving this board away, I want my brand to be out there. You know, I want them to know where this board came from so that they ask or can tell everybody who the board came from and maybe I can get another sale out of it. But once I brand it, I go ahead and I hit it with sandpaper again and get rid of that dust. We're ready for oil. This point is just a visual inspection the next day later. I think, I think, I think. No, 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 no. All right. So I was getting ready to do some laser engraving here and I started to, to check out the board. <clears throat> What I thought was just some characteristics of the cherry in this one board right here. Turns out it causes some some sort of stress here. Maybe it's checking. I'm not too familiar with what the definition is, but I would say that might be some checking. So it causes a little crack going right here. Luckily, it's just that one piece of cherry board. Even though I've already done my finish cuts, I may be able to salvage this or I'll just take it out and it'll be a little bit thinner. That's what it might actually be. But let's start over at the table saw and see if we can cut this out perfectly. What are you going to do? Huh? What are you going to do? So this brings us to tip number two. Invest in some very good ripping and cross cutting blades. I know it might seem like a lot of work to change out your blades on your saw. Maybe I can just get by with a combination blade and you can, but I can tell you that it makes life a whole lot easier. Just looking at cherry, it wants to burn. So having the proper blade when you're making the cuts can go a long way. You lose less material when it's time to clean it up. So right at this point, I cut out that piece. It was easy. Took it over to my joiner and now I'm just getting the faces all nice so that when I glue it together, I'm not stressing these boards out one bit. They go together like butter. And as you can see here, I have that nice clean glue line right there. It means that everything is great. One more change out of my blade here because I'm getting ready to trim that board that I put in there to size and then put my chamfer back on it. So if you guys didn't know, this DeWalt saw is probably one of the only job site saws or contractor saws that allow you to change out your blades in this frequency and additionally put a dado stack in there. So I really like this saw. I'd love to upgrade to a, a bigger saw at some point, but for the time being, this saw is doing me uh, just well. So I'm using my crosscut sled here and I built this not too long ago. I have a video on this if you guys are interested. And right here is when I found out that I can actually make bevel cuts on it. So you get a two for one with this table saw slide. And I have plans for this. I'll put a link down below for these to the plans. And I'll also put a link to the video if in case you guys want to check out that video. So take a look here, guys. It doesn't even look like I made a mistake. And that's what woodworking is to me. I haven't had a project to date that I didn't have to fix something. And I don't think I'll ever have a project that goes that smoothly. And if I do, well, good for me. But that brings me to tip number three. Tip number three is personalization. Whether you're giving this as a gift to one of your friends or to your family members, or if you're selling this board, personalize it. I bought a very cheap laser engraver off of Amazon, and I'll put a link to that below as well. And it's allowed me to customize my boards in a way that I didn't think I could otherwise, or was, actually I wouldn't be able to do it by hand. And with that guys, me adding oil to it, that's it.